I'm just going to bring you through a little project I'm making today. It's a 400 litre, uh, I call it a fire buddy trailer, designed to go behind a Polaris or similar, like a quad bike. Good morning, this is Corey from Rockpile Homestead. How are you? So, we're in our little off grid workshop here. Um, today's job, sorry, bird just flew straight past. <laughs> hey, really? Have a lot of birds around here. They're awesome. So cute. Um, today we're making a <coughs> 400 litre battery powered fire unit. So I'll take you through that bit by bit today um, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so this is my just little cold cut saw. Blade turns very slowly, uses a lot, a lot of coolant, just cuts through pretty much anything that will fit in the vise. So I'm just making up a little uh, basic A-frame tripod stand just to sit this little trailer frame on to get it up off the ground a bit. Just a quick little temporary thing. So we'll just knock that up. We'll go from there. Okay, so we've just got a little mock-up here, this is the basic size of it. The, the chassis part is made out of 75 by 50 mil by 3 mil wall thickness tube, just a standard little 50 mil hitch. No brakes necessary. Uh, there's some little uh, Kumo 27 inch mud terrain tires on some 14 inch rims. Uh, I've got a pretty good pump here. That should do the job. Um, fire hose reel, which will go on top of the tank. Uh, that's the 400 litre tank. Got all the parts here. Uh, hubs, axles, bearings, jockey wheel, battery, all that stuff. So I like just to have a bit of a mock up to see what it's gonna look like. And Okay, here we go, we're back again. So, Got the axle, got the hubs and bearings and all that greased up. They're all in, uh, tightened up. They're the little dust caps that go on the end. They just simply knock in with a hammer and they, if you want to undo them, you just tap them on the side and they'll come out and you can tighten up the nut to adjust the bearing tension. So that's in position. So now we'll just cut um, a few bits of steel and get ready for welding. I like to have uh, a lot of pieces cut and prepped ready to go rather than just cut one and then tack it together and that sort of thing. So uh, I've got to make a little battery tray that comes out the front here. A few little mount, extra mounts for uh, the tank to sit on that will run through that way. Uh, weld the hitch plate on. There's a jockey wheel to go on, and then uh, I'll touch back in a bit. Back. So we're coming together. Um, just put the tank on. Everything's kind of set in position where it's going to go. Uh, the hose reel is actually going to sit up here, and you'll access it from the from the back of the trailer to pull it out and wind it up. And there'll also be a master switch here that operates the the battery, the pump, uh, to turn it on. Big and heavy duty. So I'm just uh, about to weld up the, start welding the um, bracket. Whoa. Sorry, I zoomed in the wrong way. So I'm just about to start welding up the part of the bracket to hold the hose reel. Uh, I've got my little welding bench that I made. It's just a bit of 10 mil plate with a all been laser cut, heap of 10 mil holes in it, so it's pretty accurate for stuff. Um, and then also had these triangles laser cut uh, a while ago. They just basically from a, from a sheet, and I just cut 
Oh, I've got, they go right up to 1200 by 600 and they just all fit inside each other. That's how you get the, the best of your nesting program when you cut stuff. So, um, just use that me squares, clamp it down and I'll just tack it all up. Um, I don't really weld everything fully to start with. I like to tack everything together in the shape that I'm going to do and then uh, clamp it solid as best I can and then start the welding process because if you just start welding fully in one corner there's a good chance it'll just warp and twist and you won't end up sort of square and stuff. So that's it. So I'll get cracking on this. Uh, I'm going to put the tunes on. It's a bit hard to weld. Uh, sorry, it's a bit hard to film uh, while welding because I don't want to get splattered on the camera um, and it's really bright and awkward. I know other people do it but whatever. And I've got the generator because we're fully off grid. Uh, everything we I run in here like the, the drill press and the little lathe and just random stuff. You know the saw and the band saw and stuff it all runs off the battery system. Uh, but the welder um, I have a generator that basically just goes on the other side of this shed wall here. I just run the lead out to it, turn it on, and it's a bit loud. It's not it's not a fancy silenced type. So I'll get cracking, stop waffling, get cracking, talk to you later. Now I've just made up the little battery tray holder. Um, battery will sit just in that square there, and I might put a bit of checker plate on the bottom for it to rest on, drill a hole in it so water can't uh, fill up in there. That'll get, I'll try and do this one handed, that'll get kind of welded like down, down a bit in the inside the frame. And then I've made up the first half of the hose reel holder. The light's, the light's not too good in the shed here unfortunately, but so this is the hose reel holder um, from a simple bracket we get welded down the bottom there and then I will make another support like like this that'll kind of come out down on a 45 and then down to the side of the frame here uh, to take that weight stop that bouncing that'll make that quite solid um, and then it's just making some brackets for the mud guards and essentially then we just uh, go to town with the welder weld it all up a uh, basic battery isolator switch heavy duty nice big red handle on it on off um, and that'll just get mounted somewhere on the side here so when you stand at the back you can see it quite uh, easily click turn it on on and then uh, I nearly dropped it <laughs> don't do that it's brand new <laughs> okay so I've just done the final mock-up with the tank here um, obviously I'm moving the tank on and off when I do the welding and the grinding because I don't want to get little burn marks on the tank because this is a new product so that's it, it's looking pretty good, it is, everything's all you know, square and level and lines up well and so I'm going to take it all apart now and do the final weld up. Again, just about to call it call it the day go and have a beer you know some of us work pretty hard here so we got everything on jockey wheel on now this is just galvanized pre galvanized uh, steel tube uh, and I just spray paint the welds with galvan with gal paint silver gal paint um, I have done trailers in the past where we hot dip galvanize them but where we live now on our off-grid property and the way prices are going, uh, it takes me 
nearly an hour 45 minutes to get to the galvanizers and then the same back so it's like over it's about three and a half hours driving you got to go there drop it off and then go back seven days later and pick it up um, and for something like this to get galvanized probably I reckon be looking about 250 bucks so but then you throw in the the travel and it adds up so hence the the uh, pre gal tube. So all the mounts are on, everything's done. Gonna run a bit of hidden wire in here. So the switch will go on these four mounting holes and then it will cable disappear in there. Come out the bottom and then disappear into the chassis or then um, split conduit. So, looking all right. G'day folks, it's uh, the next morning. Just done a few little errands around the house, around the um, property this morning. And we're back into the shed. So we've got everything, everything's been fully welded, um, apart from the axle location. I have welded the uh, my little mounts uh, to the to the axle there was we'll taking a little bit to zoom uh, to the axle there uh, but I'm not sure where I want to put it yet just in relation to the weight distribution um, probably gonna go for 50 mil to the rear of center of the tank I think that will be quite sufficient um, so yeah so we've got the uh, the pump here we have the pump it is a sure flow uh, 5.3 gallons a minute or 20 liters a minute so that should be ample just put a couple of little elbows on the ends um, now I'm just going to show you a little thread tape trick for those that don't know, I'll just uh, set the camera up on the tripod and I'll be back. Okay, so a lot of you probably already know how to put thread tape on. I don't know if it's the right or the wrong way, but it's the way I've been shown and it seems to work well for me. I'm right-handed, so I hold my threaded part in my left hand. I have my thread tape with the thread tape coming off the bottom of the roll. See, bottom of the roll. I start it on here, I like to give it a little bit of a push, and then we just roll it around. Snap it off, done. Now I like when I'm doing poly fittings, when I do poly fittings, I like to uh, leave a bit of the thread exposed to start with, so it screws into the other fitting very well and then I gradually make my thread tape thicker by the time it gets down to here because then I can really tighten this fitting up nicely and know that I've got a good seal because my thread tape is almost tapered I suppose it's thicker here than it is here if that makes sense could just be me being fussy who knows but that's it all right so guess what the trailer is 99% finished it's on its own wheels now. It rolls around quite lovely. The pump works. It's coming together really, really well. I'll show you around. So battery wiring, pretty basic. Just got a, I used a, a mega fuse just because of the sheer, the, the size. They're just a bit, bit bulkier, a bit easier to, a bit easier to handle. So, you know, positive, negative, just got a simple plant type setup. If you're wondering what the battery is, it's a Century Deep Cycle AGM. I don't actually know how many amp, oh, 55 amp hours it is. It's actually on the top, but I covered it with the uh, bit of rubber that I put on there. Uh, and then we come back, wiring kind of hidden down here. Got the pump in out of the way. Um, back to there, that's where it gets the suction from. 
and then that pumps the pressure side back up to the hose here um, and then we're good and then we just got the simple switch on off and uh, wow that's about it it's only got about 50 litres of water in it just to test the pump at the moment it all pushes no worries so when I do the mud guards we're going to drag it outside and uh, give you a bit of a look around in the in the sunshine just thought I'd drag the little trailer out into the paddock here and give you a quick wander around about what I did and finished product it is I've just towed it out with my mower um, it's not made for the mower it's probably a little bit heavy for the for the zero turn there it is 400 litres of water so um, we'll just do a little walk around it's a standard 50 mil ball hitch standard jockey wheel which is removable so you can leave the jockey wheel in the shed when it's hooked behind the Polaris it's got a century 12 volt 55 amp hour deep cycle battery and he'll just charge that in the shed um, and here we have the pump it's a shore flow 21 litres a minute at 90 psi it's rated for so I use 6 mil twin core cable it's got I, I used a mega fuse in here um, just because of the size it's a bit bigger to physically handle um, and then the suction comes out of the bottom of the tank goes up to the fire hose reel um, I had to modify the um, I don't even know what this, what this actual fittings called it's like a an o-ring fitting so the hose stays still but the hose reel can spin if you know what that particular fitting is called please drop a comment I'd love to know but anyway the o-ring that came with it was too small and it was leaking so I had to take the brass bit out machine a bigger uh, o-ring groove in it and put a heavier duty o-ring in uh, I used a battery on off switch which is basically oh, a little bit of focus happening is basically just on off heavy duty switch rated for a dual battery system in a in a car so won't have any issues with that it's got a drain plug on the back um, just a, a manual wind hose reel uh, as I said before it holds 400 litres of water um, I've got some little uh, these are Kumo tires they're 27 by 8.5 by 14 and they're on 14 by 6 rims I just happen to use a Ford pattern with a 39mm round axle there is no suspension on it uh, we just adjust the tyre pressure to suit the weight of what's in the trailer um, that help keep the cost down so the principle behind this is they wanted something uh, easy to use that didn't have a petrol engine that they had to worry about oh, not starting or hasn't got fuel or something uh, this is basically the water trees with around their <coughs> excuse me around their farm and if they happen to do any burning off like leaf piles or little brush piles or something they can just have this on hand um, with 400 liters of water in it and it's just a little safety net you know just in case something does go wrong um, if any bigger fires happen they uh, also have a, a big tractor with a, a fire unit available so they can use that but this is just easy turn the switch squirts water take it where you want Drive. so my wife's got the camera i got the hose if i squirt her she's gonna smack me <laughs> so we're out here i'll show you how to operate it pretty simple uh, turn it on oh that was a bit premature turn it on Away we go. That's it. So you can water your trees. You can squirt your wife, kids, and uh, put out those little, um, you know, emergency little fires if you're just burning a small pile of brush, you know, meter square or something. Easy. And when you're done, you just turn it off. 
to flick the switch back to the off position and, and then you just wind it back up, put it in the shed, put the battery back on charge, ready for the next time. And remember, if you like what you see, click, subscribe, hit the bell, do this, that, this, everything. Just, just hit it. Make it happen. All right. I'll take a screenshot. <laughs> not that. I'm not, I'm not going to put that as the, as the screenshot. Pull your shirt down. <laughs> I can't see the hose because it's your black on black. So it needs contrast, so point it that way. <laughs> not that either. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>